Good morning. I'll be your host this morning as we talk about the South to South Triangular Corporation. I am Rita Kanya Mujuni. Now, this week in particular, the government of Uganda, in partnership with the African Peer Review Mechanism through the 17th to the 19th of January 2023, hosted the second high-level forum on the South to South Triangular Corporation. And it was under the theme, Building National Capacities for South-South Triangular Corporation Ecosystems in Africa and Forging Horizontal partnerships for sustainable and resilient co societies. Now, part of the events for the past three days had His Excellency Yori Kaguta Museveni, who is the President of the Republic of Uganda, give the keynote address during this forum, and this happened yesterday. The conference brought together political leaders and heads of corporations, institutions, from key private partners and public institutions, which is a demonstration of the commitment to accelerate the South-South Triangular Corporation implementation. Now joining me this morning to continue this conversation that has actually been carried live on the National Planning Authority's YouTube and social media platforms for the past three days. The hashtag was um, NPA South to South. There was also another hashtag South to South. Now bringing the conversation here on NTV to just conclude what has been said, summarize what has been a part of the past three days, I'm joined by our guests, one who is Miss Sarah Hamuda from the she is the coordinator of the Africa High Level Forum for South to South Triangular Cooperation, and she is from the African Peer Review Mechanism uh, Continental Secretariat. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you. Now, we're also joined by Ms. Emily Chelengat, who is the head of communication at the National Planning Authority. Emily? Yeah, thank you very much to, to host us here, and I'm glad to share more about the forum. Okay, and lastly, I'm joined. We are joined by one gentleman, just to have this <laughs> as even as possible. He is the Chief Strategy Policy and Senior Economic Advisor from UNDP. That is Tangaville Pal Pal Palaneville. I hope I'm saying this right. Correct, yes, yes. <laughs> you are welcome. Yeah, thank you, Rita. Uh, nice to be here. Now we have had and maybe I'm saying it a lot, South to South Triangular Corporation, you're wondering what is that, if you might not have known what it is. Sarah, take us through what this is, because it's the second high-level forum being held. One was in Cairo, this one being in Uganda, but for many within um, the community, within Uganda, might not know a thing or two about the South to South Co Triangular Corporation. Okay, thank you very much, Rita. And once again, I'm, I'm really delighted to be here, to be invited by the NTV uh, Uganda. Uh, South South Cooperation has been endorsed almost, I would say, seven or, s or even eight decades ago. Uh, it's one of the development cooperation forums uh, that enrich um, uh, collaboration between African countries and countries of the global south in general. And uh, you might notice that um, our continent has been also affected by a very difficult history of colonialism and then independence. And with the um, uh, adoption of the non-alignment movement in 1950s and then the, the growing um, uh, membership of this movement, countries have started to think about different type of uh, collaboration to encourage the South-South cooperation. So it basically means collaboration between countries of the Global South, mainly from Asia, Latin America, Africa, uh, on technical assistance programs, on human capacity building programs, on even different sectors, uh, collaboration like infrastructure, health, education, and so on and so forth. Um, um, on the other hand, triangular cooperation refers to the engagement or involvement of um, a partner from the north, mm -hmm. which mainly provides financial support through uh, a facilitating partner from the south to implement or to assist a third country also in the global south. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if you, um, uh, Sweden or any other country from Europe or even from uh, US decided to support, uh, I would say, um, Zambia or maybe Zimbabwe through uh, um, um, a finance to give to the government of South Africa to maybe dispatch doctors, dispatch professors, dispatch uh, engineers to assist in building mega projects or, as I said, human development projects. Mm. So this is the real difference. Having said that, uh, South-South cooperation is a standalone type of cooperation that has been uh, clearly growing in the last five decades, especially with the emerging players from the Global South. Uh, India has been uh, leading this South-South cooperation 
uh, with many uh, partners and many countries, especially in Africa. I think they are the, one of the largest providers of human capacity building programs for um, African governments. We have, uh, I think, Indonesia, Malaysia. Uh, we have also South Korea, which has been also moving from being a recipient of aid to a donor uh, in 1990s and uh, China and, uh, uh, and many, many other countries. Mm. Thank you. Well, when you talk about the many, many other countries, Uganda is one of them. Of course. Mm. And having had the privilege to honor and host this uh, second high-level forum, Emily, why Uganda? How did we have this opportunity to host this? Uh, thank you very much, Rita. Um, Uganda was truly privileged to host this forum. Uh, as Shaz Aliaron said, uh, this is the second high-level forum. Uh, the previous one was held in Egypt. Uh, so Uganda uh, was selected by the African Union through the African Peer Review Mechanism, which is an organ of the African Union, to host this forum, uh, mostly because uh, given our head of state's experience in development mm. and uh, being able to identify the issues that have hindered our growth, uh, Uganda was selected. And, um, and uh, because, uh, uh, to just give a little background, and then why the National Planning Authority was able to, to be the, the chief host uh, for the government of Uganda, uh, given the mandate of the National Planning Authority of uh, developing comprehensive and integrated national development plans, mm -hmm. uh, it, the forum was an opportunity to be able to pick out key things that we need to consider moving forward. Because uh, remember, the planning framework that guides uh, government, the Comprehensive National Development Planning Framework, uh, proposes that we have to have plans in terms of 30-year, 10-year, mm. and also 5-year. And so we have the Uganda Vision 2040 mm. that mm. guides our development uh, agenda. But also we have 10-year development plans, but also now the third national development plan that we are implementing mm. until uh, 2025. So the forum. The forum was, was an opportunity for Uganda to be able to identify those key things in development that we can use to, impl to implement development programs and drive us forward. Mm. Yes. Well, when we talk about those development programs, Dr. Palani, bringing you into this conversation, Uganda, UNDP, and now also the South-South Triangular Corporation, how do you tie into this? Uh, yeah, thank you, Rita. UNDP has been historically actually advancing the agenda on sustainable and uh, the, the agenda. Also in that context, the South-South Cooperation, South-South Triangular Cooperation has been an important instrument for UNDP is, is, is using it to advance the sustainable human developmental agenda. And since inception, UNDP 1965 been doing this thing and um, UNDP, for example, in 1974 established a special unit within the UNDP to promote South-South cooperation and uh, UNDP also have been periodically organizing on behalf of the UN system a major UN conference on South-South triangular cooperation starting with 1978 mm -hmm. in, in Argentina which actually came out this Brunner's uh, 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 plan of action 1978 79 then i mean in 2009 uh, UN, uh, the undp also organized along with other partners yeah, a major conference in nairobi kenya to do the same thing and 2019 asara indicated mm -hmm. the baba 40 is done so that's a undp has a historical actually role in promoting the south south triangular cooperation that's the first point I will. Uh, the undp in africa continent level also been doing organizing a major knowledge sharing workshop, conferences, policy symposium, and range of issue, mm. and and the, and the regional integration, financing for developmental uh, um, issues, and related to the SDG implementation kind of issues. At the country level also, in the last 10, 15 years, UNDP Uganda has been promoting a range of actually, I mean, um, activities, uh, leveraging the South South actually cooperations. We are promoting actually uh, not only taking sometimes the, the government officials or youth from Uganda, private sector, I mean entrepreneurs from Uganda to other countries to, to expose them the kind of the markets available, um, the, uh, the opportunity available for the youth, women leaders 
our private sector in Uganda to do more export leveraging the AFCT and other things. So we do a range of and uh, not only doing on the on the on the trade integration side, the UNDP Uganda also doing similar things on the governance, especially I mean promoting uh, the digital transformation within the the judicial system and the also I mean um, promoting um, like uh, the other other climate climate financing area or the, uh, the other, other governmental area. Mm -hmm. So we do a range of issues and uh, so that's the, our contest. But uh, if you really even want to back what actually we get out of this conference, I can also elaborate that. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. What do we get from that? Like uh, if you see that last three days, we had actually had a, uh, yeah, over 100 participants uh -huh. from over, I mean, 25, 30 countries in Africa, other countries, Latin America, Asia and other people participated. The, the one of the major aim of this conference is enhancing the knowledge gap mm. on the South-South actually triangular cooperation. Still, many stakeholders and many people are not fully aware of that. So the one thing actually, the APRM and the other development partner like Islamic Development Bank, the UNDP and other partners agree to do this kind of major conferences mm. to to enhance that knowledge gap. And knowledge gap not just only on the partnership side, but also specific thematic area. Yeah. As I said, regional integration. How country could actually share their experiences in implementing this the continental continental free trade agreement mm -hmm. area. Are the are the mobilizing innovative financing option, are leveraging the private sector to advance the, the, the sustainable developmental agenda. So so in the last three days so that is the kind of sharing the best practices, sharing country experiences is, is done successfully. The second thing which which everyone actually, I mean, kind of agreed, accepted that the the the, the importance, the needs of the the advancing the the South South cooperation agenda, South South channel of cooperation mm -hmm. agenda. So so that's something again. I mean, they also recognize that South South cooperation is not actually a substitute for the traditional north to south cooperation. Mm. Rather, the south-south cooperation is a more like a complementary. It's additional to the traditional north to south cooperation. Mm. As part of that, th the conference, the participants also agreed to the enhancing the national ecosystem, a kind of establishing a national level institutions, ministry, uh, department, promoting this kind of international cooperation. And uh, the conference also discussed about the potential development partner role on that one. Like Islamic development had a commitment to support the many countries, including Uganda, uh, uh, to establish a national one. Similarly, the conference also identified the importance of actually the, the, the data information related to the South-South cooperation, okay. triangular cooperation. Unlike the traditional developmental cooperation where the, the, the OECD secretariat under the DAC framework, they have a systematically capturing, disseminating the, the, the data related to the, the traditional cooperation. But when it comes to the South-South cooperation, there is a bit of lack of information, le 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 uh, lack of I mean, uh, uh, data, mm -hmm. which actually prevent the, the uh, undermine the assessing the effective, the impact of the South-South developmental cooperation. Mm -hmm. So so that is also, I mean, uh, recognized. And um, as, as a part of that, there is a one session in the conference talked about establishing the International Research Institute to, 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 to do to this kind of thing, data kind of data analysis yeah. kind of things. So yeah. I can go and add that there are, I mean, number of actually key messages comes unless if time permit, okay. I just wanted to and say we'll that. We'll get into the key yeah. messages yes. later yes. on into yeah. the discussion. But now that we know how UNDP ties into it, we take a look at how the African peer review mechanism also ties into it. So Sarah, tell us, how do we see the APRM, as we'll call it for this discussion, and the, the South-South Triangular Cooperation coming together? Uh, thank you, Rita. I think, yeah, maybe as, as uh, Dr. Parani was just saying, if we look at back a little bit, the African peer review mechanism uh, was founded since 2003 as a voluntary-led mechanism for good governance promotion on the continent. And this has been uh, led by the um, uh, revival of the African Union in 2002 
the visionary of uh, President Mabiki of South Africa at that time, and also um, presidents from Algeria and other Libya and other countries to revive the African uh, institutions. So uh, within this transformation, AUDA NIPAD, or NIPAD, the New Partnership for Africa, mm -hmm. uh, was created. And then EPRM was also supporting um, this organization in order to produce um, um, sufficient and support countries as regard um, as economic policies, a liberal economy, and also socioeconomic policies are concerned. And I think UNDP has played a major role in this transformation. Then after maybe 14 years, EPRM was given an expanded mandate in 2017 to play a role in the monitoring and evaluation of sustainable development goals and Agenda 2063. And of course, UNDP is a leading institution mm -hmm. in that part. Uh, and from our side as EPRM, we try to be very focused on, on SDG 16, which matters the um, uh, building uh, efficient, strong institutions mm -hmm. and peaceful communities. So this, this goal is an um, enabler and also implementing goal for the rest of the agenda, because you can't achieve development without peace and without strengthening your institutions at national level. And the same goal resonates to Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, mm -hmm. uh, as Aspiration 3. Um, uh, Africa with rule of law, mm -hmm. uh, democracy, and respect to human rights, and Aspiration 4, peaceful Africa. So with this very broad mandate, we have been also encouraged to enhance countries' capacity to report on national governance at national level. And uh, within our engagement with our partners, trying to broaden the engagement, we were invited to Buenos Aires and Argentina. We organized the Big Side event. And I have to mention here the ambassador of Uganda to the United Nations, Ambassador Adonia Ibari, who has been really, um, uh, I would say, co-drafter of the outcome of, of Buenos Aires meeting, but also encouraging um, a, an, an African Union organization or an institute or mechanism like EPRM to play further role in South-South cooperation. Mm -hmm. They noticed that EPRM itself is a very exceptional model of South-South because countries from Africa are voluntarily acceded to the mechanism. And now I think today we, are, we reached more than 45 countries. L lastly, Comoros mm -hmm. joined EPRM because you have to accept voluntarily to be um, mm -hmm. assessed, mm -hmm. uh, assessed as regard as the five thematic areas of governance we have. Mm -hmm. Political governance, economic governance, socioeconomic governance, uh, corporate governance and investment and lastly we added this because of COVID the issue of resilience and mm -hmm. disaster management. So we started all of this South-South cooperation where we noticed that there are many cross-cutting issues about development, national development planning, mm -hmm. um, a disaster management framework, supporting investments, are concerning issues, supporting women, empowering youth um, uh, for the achievement of SDGs are all cross-cutting issues among the countries of Global South. Mm -hmm. As, as Prof. Palani highlighted the, the uh, objective of the, of the forum, I have to say that starting from the, the first forum we had in Cairo, and you can have a look at our outcome report from Cairo, the main idea that Ambassador Adonia even was discussing always and emphasizing that Africa doesn't have an institutional platform to discuss South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation needs mm -hmm. to identify, and this is what even Miss Elsie, the UN resident representative, was uh, highlighting yesterday, that First of all, you need to identify priorities if you really want to achieve sustainable development, beside inform and invest and, and all the other eyes she, she gave us yesterday. Yeah. But we wanted to have an institutional platform to make sure that African countries can gather together yeah. to discuss these issues. So we have been settling actually quite specific thematic areas every year. The issue of building resilience, especially that the idea even to organize the forum took place while almost COVID-19 was hitting the world. So we felt that, okay, we need to discuss how we can build resilience. What is the global and regional context in Africa for South-South cooperation? And the continent has been, of course, struggling with so many shocks. Um, as Dr. Parini says, how, what are, how far the, the countries responded to the pandemic, the economic resilience, the economic policies, and, and I think in the session of Minister Logulobi, the Minister of State of Finance, he, he has provided a very detailed um, I would say, a uh, response to how the government responded to COVID-19. The multidimensional policies approach, the reforms in legislations, finance, and so on, so forth. tax, um, um, tax uh, you know, innovative approaches, innovative ideas for finance. And then we also move to discuss how far private sector is involved. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what is the role of the African Union, the role of our strategic partners? How should we support countries more? 
and so on and so forth. So I think the idea of the forum itself is extremely important because you can document after that what countries have said, mm -hmm. what countries have promised, what kind of conclusions we are coming out, and initiatives, new initiatives. Mm -hmm. So this year, I'm happy to say that Uganda, uh, the forum has been even witnessed higher level of participation compared to Cairo. Uh, we got more than high, um, uh, high level delegates from 15 countries, beside the um, uh, EPC uh, um, Brazil, beside our main partners and co-organizers, the Islamic Development Bank, the Saudi Fund for Development, mm. USAID, China, uh, uh, JICA also in Uganda. And also I want to say that what makes this forum very special mm -hmm. to my, even to me, and I was delighted to do that, is the idea of the exhibition, that we provide an exhibition for Ugandan youth and also uh, youth mm. from across the continent, more than 17 participants. Mm. They came, they presented the ideas they have, and this has been a quite costly um, um, uh, exercise to choose them among 200 applications we received. Mm -hmm. And all of them, they are sharing the stories of development from national perspective. Some people work on uh, silencing the guns and peace uh, in their countries. Some of them work on, on alleviating poverty. Some work on education, health projects. Mm -hmm. Extremely amazing. And from Uganda, we were very happy to taste the beauty of the Ugandan coffee yeah. uh, <laughs> as one of the, uh, one of the, the exhibitors uh, mm -hmm came from the local community and I was really, really impressed and happy for yeah. that. So even the local communities got to benefit yeah. from the second high level course, forum. It wasn't closed off, but also they get to benefit from this conversation that we're having this morning. Now when you earlier talked about, Sarah, the South-South Triangular Corporation, it talks about support different forms of support that the countries within can be able to receive. Mm -hmm. um, Emily, what kind of support has Uganda, let's just, since it's Uganda that we have here in the room today, <laughs> what kind of support has Uganda received from the South to South Corporation? Thank you very much, Rita. Um, Uganda as a country, we've received several support or we've been a beneficiary of South to South Corporation, but also Triangular Corporation. Corporation. Yeah, um, one very recent one that I can highlight is uh, last year in November 2022, uh, uh, the fund, there is a fund that was uh, 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 launched to support Karamoja region to get out of uh, malnutrition. Uh, this fund is being supported by India, it's India, Brazil and South Africa and mm -hmm. I think UNDP is a yeah. major player okay. in this. Um, and so the, the, the program seeks to help the region have food, s several food varieties, mm -hmm. but also help women get out of poverty by supporting them to be commercial cereal producers. Yeah, yeah so that is one, one key highlight that I think we are going to see the, <laughs> out the, the outcomes of that will help uh, uh, alleviate the region from malnutrition but also the poverty. Mm. Um, one other key, um, key benefit that we've received as a country from South South uh, Triangular Corporation is uh, uh, a project that is in the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, it started in 2012, and uh, this is majorly supported by China, and uh, and the the UN agency that is on board is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, and that is uh, that project is supporting agriculture, horticulture, livestock farming, uh, also a production of cereal like foxtail millet. Mm. Yes, and um, from the first phase, the first phase of the project actually. Uh, had good results. Uh, we, we experienced a quadrupled production of rice mm. with the support that we got because there mm. were trainings, uh, there was expertise shared, and also uh, pro um, uh, use useful varieties, varieties that could help produce more mm. and also access markets. And then another uh, another project that I think we've we've really benefited from is uh, Egypt has been a very key player. Uh, uh, there was uh, previously we had a project that helped uh, communities access drinking water. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, over 75 boreholes were dug. Mm -hmm. That was help uh, el help helping communities access clean drinking water. Uh, we also had the project that was ab about uh, Lake Victoria. I think it was a weed control project by Egypt supporting Uganda. Uh, also, we had uh, a support from Nigeria. Now that mm -hmm. that is a clear. Uh, uh, sign of of south to south, mm. Nigeria supporting Uganda on uh, engineers. It was mm. an expertise uh, knowledge sharing exchange exchange program. Uh, Uganda benefited, and uh, the project w had a focus in uh, in Islamic University of Uganda, 
Kabal, Kabal in University mm -hmm. and also Kampala International University. Those are the major beneficiaries. Uh, there, there are several projects really, but also to say not to forget the support China gives to Uganda mm -hmm. on interest-free interest loans as well as uh, lo uh, grants. Yeah. We've developed hydropower dams, we've been able to construct roads, uh, we've also been able to have uh, expatriates from China coming to Uganda to train to train Ugandans engineers in all in all in all fields. Mm. Yes, so Uganda has been a good beneficiary. Okay. And so yeah. Yeah, okay. if you allow me, Rita, I want to say something very briefly on mm -hmm. the issue of of South South notion. Mm -hmm. yeah. From what Emily has been saying, the the notion of the South South also and triangular cooperation is the notion of solidarity, mm. solidarity, mutual respect, non conditionality. Mm -hmm. Because unfortunately, for many years, uh, when um, the new development era since 1950s and 60s has been growing. The, the traditional donors always have certain level of conditionality on the recipient countries of aid yeah. or official development assistance, yeah. thinking that they can achieve certain progress at political or economic level as long as we provide this aid. Mm. And sometimes it succeeds and other times it completely failed because this doesn't take into consideration the uh, specificities, specificities of the local context mm. and the local context needs and the fact that people need access to health care, access to water, access to education before discussing what political gains they can have like yeah. democratization. Yeah. So I think this is a very important notion you can see now from the stories that uh, Emily says and I would like to say that even in the uh, COVID-19 pandemic when China dispatched all these um, um, uh, health workers to come to Africa and when Cuba assisted South Africa with um, also uh, doctors and nurses to support the African South African capacities yeah. when Ethiopia offered the cargo of 80 the Ethiopian Airlines to serve the whole continent while we were completely in shutdown yeah. from the whole world yeah. all these examples are also um, uh, affirming that South South cooperation is a very very important uh, development cooperation modality that mm. we should always empower. Yeah, it Thank sure you. is. Uh, Dr. Rita, Palani, you have to add? Yeah, I can want to add uh, what Emily actually said is the South-South cooperation is the not only the, the recipient, mm. the country mm -hmm. could also recipient of support from other developing country. Mm. But invariably, with the country or the, I mean, emerging country, middle-income country, low-income country, mm they tend to also offer something to other country. Mm. So I wanted to highlight what Uganda has contributed to the development of other country. Okay, let's, because we've we've talked about, Emily has mentioned what we have yeah. received as a country, so I want what to, have we given correct, out as a country. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to highlight three, because it's not all the times you have to give to only money, financial support. Mm. Even sharing some best practices mm -hmm. would be useful to other country. Like last month, or, or yeah, last month, the the government of Benin, UNDP, UNDP Benin, wanted to learn from government of Uganda, mm -hmm. and the the kind of the what what we call it, the certification of compilation. Like basically, how government of Uganda trying to actually enhance the alignment between the development planning framework, budgetary framework, mm. because often the planning has uh, something, the budget allocation something else. Yes. So, so therefore the government has established a process called instrument called certification of compliance. As part of that, the, the National Planning Authority has to certify mm -hmm. of the previous year budget how ministry has done mm -hmm. to when we present the new budget. Mm -hmm. So that was a very a, a, a innovative instrument, I mean to enhance the alignment. So we facilitated knowledge sharing of government of Uganda to government of Benin. Mm. So where uh, the National Planning Authority experts and myself, we had a I mean, presentation, we shared the experience how the government of Uganda mm. moved from a sectoral based planning into a program based planning during the NDP3 formulation. Uh, how also government trying to enhance the, 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 the alignment between planning, financing one. So that's number one, more like knowledge sharing to mm. other country. Mm. The, the other one I would actually highlight that the hosting of a refugee. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like Uganda is, 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 is actually hosting more than 1.5 million refugees yeah. from other country, mm, yeah. which is a very generous. Mm -hmm. It's a basically try to help the other conflict countries, the, the marginalized people, 
the people, vulnerable people. Mm. So uh, again, I mean, due to time limitation, I'm not going to that. Yeah. But that could be number two. Mm. The third one, globally, the, for, for shaping this South-South um, cooperation policy process, Uganda, the ambassador of government, the Uganda ambassador to the UN, mm. played as co-chair at the global level to advance the preparation of, for example, the, the, the letters to the, the global cooperation agenda and South South. So I can go and highlight mm. how Uganda also has not only been recipient from the country, yeah. but also playing an important role, not only neighboring country, but also at the global level mm. and promoting on the South South cooperation. Yeah. yeah. Well, staying with you, Dr. Palani, we now turn our eyes to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. And of course, when you talk about UNDP, we look there a number of times. The message from the forum from these past three days, tell us what it was like when it comes to the SDGs, South to South uh, Triangular Cooperation. Yeah, I think th the first thing is that apart from this kind of knowledge sharing, which I already highlighted, that th this, this high level forum shared a number of interesting experience from various countries on various issues and uh, the financing for developmental and the AFCTA, the regional value chain, mm. all kind of things. Even there was a presentation from Malaysia, how country like Uganda, African country, can actually scale up the production of palm oil, mm. the trees mm. and other yeah. things. That actually, not only actually, I mean, going to help livelihood, but also will promote the regional value chain mm. because the palm oil not only just is a it's kind of edible oil but it's also being used as a intermediate inputs for producing chocolates all kind of other manufacturing items consumable items mm. uh, even for I mean other creams and all so so that was the presentation and I'm trying to actually facilitate that so so that's a one 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 type of thing I wanted to the second things there was increased actually recognitions I mean I mean commitment from the stakeholder, the importance of South-South cooperation as, as a key instrument for implementation of the STG agenda. So that's the second one. Mm. And so there is an increased commitment. And uh, 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 there is also in the increased recognition of the, the collecting more data, more I mean, um, information, more in-depth analysis to assess the effectiveness of South-South cooperation compared to other type of cooperation. So that's again would be useful for the sustainable development agenda. Mm. And again, uh, 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 our resident representative highlighted that how do you actually scale up this South-South Triangular Cooperation in the context of achieving sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. Our resident representative highlighted number of six prong strategy. The first one is the, the identify areas in which South-South cooperation can play a more effective role, mm -hmm. even compared to the, the the traditional cooperation. Like identify area means, like there are some areas, for example, yeah, yeah, tropical agriculture, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, disease related to the developing country, like kind of malaria, Ebola, dengue fever, uh, cholera, all kind of things, where this is commonly pre prevalent in the developing world. Africa, Asia, Latin America. This kind of diseases are a tropical agriculture is not common in the developed country. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, developing country can have more practical experiences how to manage Ebola, how to manage malaria, mm -hmm. how to actually promote a tropical agriculture. So, so that therefore identify a, a, a potential area in which South-South cooperation can play more effective, meaningful role. Mm -hmm. So that's a one she, our resident representative highlighted. The second one is the importance of the, the kind of scaling up, which is the investment. Investment for more investment for South-South cooperation. Yeah. Okay, that's the one. The third one is integration. Mm. Like often actually, the South-South comes maybe when you look for money, that kind of thing. No, the South-South cooperation need to be identified at the planning stage. It need to be actually mainstreamed, integrated when country prepare a developmental vision mm. or, or a country prepare a national development plan. So that's an important one. Then, then, then similarly, we, we, uh, our recent representative also highlighted the importance of actually the integrity. Or, I mean, um, there is a range of, she highlighted five, six, I, mm. like 
starting with identification, mm -hmm. investment, mm -hmm. integration, mm -hmm. innovation, because sometimes there is a, a, a low cost solution available in the developing country yeah. to address some of the issue. So innovation is, is another one mm -hmm. where any country, it could be low, con low income country, but still can share some experiences with other country. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. innovation. So that's another type of, I mean, possible way forward support to the implementation of STG. Yeah. So I can go and add number of the mm. way forward one, mm. but I stop. Okay, Thank you. we'll stop that. But as for all that we are sharing here, um, what you've mentioned, what the resident uh, representative. representative said, Madam it shows I know that it was shared on the platform of yes. the National Planning Authority on Twitter. So mm. some of these conversations will continue past here. You can go and check them out as well there. But going back to the sessions that happened over the past three days, Sarah, what messages stood out in these sessions? Well, uh, uh, in addition to what Dr. Palani highlighted, uh, definitely the first and key message that Africa is, w is going through a very complex and challenging uh, regional context uh, in the South South. Uh, the Ukrainian-Russian war has definitely affected uh, a lot of um, uh, aspects, especially food security, supply chain, uh, uh, even some projects. And therefore, we need now to focus about a, nar a new narrative of mm. being autonomous and uh, not independent on any country to expect that we need to be feed it from outside. Mm -hmm. And this is the ma same message that has been uh, emphasized by His Excellency Museveni yesterday. He even gave us also the, this visionary uh, talk about that we need to focus on food security, mm -hmm. we need to focus on manufacturing and industrialization, otherwise the Africa continental free trade area will not be, you know, will not be uh, boasted to move because you need to have certain strong industrial base in order to be able to uh, produce and to exchange of goods between African countries. And we need to focus on digitalization because we remain the least disconnected, the, the least connected continent in the world or the most disconnected country in continent in the world mm -hmm. among other continents. Almost 30% 30 30 of the whole population of the continent mm -hmm. has proper and stable access to internet. And I think what Madame Elsie uh, added to these eyes is the information, mm. right. the, strong, the, the strong impact of information, yes. how we should inform people, and therefore access to information should be for free. Yeah. So we don't keep our citizens ignorant mm. about what's happening across the world. And we can, say, we can see from the exhibition how people were passionate to say, um, and you can see here this very brief um, a flyer on EPRM achievements of or milestones of South-South cooperation, mm. or even the reports we produce on the Africa voluntary national reviews on SDGs and Agenda 63, they are very passionate to understand more what SDGs mean, how we can implement. Mm. There is also a very important report we need to refer to, the African Union report, the Continental Report on Agenda 2063. We produced two of these reports, mm. one in 2019 and 2021. And the youth uh, um, we female representatives and even the development partners also uh, give a, a key message that this kind of reporting is extremely important, either on SDGs, Agenda 163, or even South-South cooperation, how far we are. Mm -hmm. um, I remember that the UNDP without the NIPAD uh, provided a report in 2018 on South-South cooperation. We noticed the proliferation and somehow um, um, uh, duplicated mm -hmm. initiatives from some partners to Africa, and therefore you need to have a strong, at least um, uh, periodically, uh, reporting mechanism mm. and attach it with knowledge products on how far the continent is. So, as I said, the global context, the complexity of the wars, impact on Africa, the issues that we need to focus uh, um, uh, on, the priorities as emphasized by President uh, Museveni. Of course, this has been a, an important also message about the role of diaspora, mm. Africans and diaspora. What should they do? How we can support this? intellectual capital transformation from the Africans and diaspora to the continent and how can how far the sixth the sixth region as we call them mm -hmm. can play influential role to support their countries and lastly but not least of course uh, beside empowering youth supporting research is also the role of think tanks African owned think tanks mm -hmm. to produce also knowledge uh, sharing between the countries that can be benefit for everyone and lastly but not least also looking to our close neighbors the, uh, in the Middle East, uh, um, of course, North Africa, um, uh, uh, Asia, in case they can fulfill the financial gaps. And mm -hmm. we had a full session in the forum, if you, s if you notice, 
on when President, uh, when Minister Logolobi was referring to the Ugandan experience, where Egypt, Kenya, and JICA highlighted, and especially Kenya, the financial modalities, and, and Rwanda as well, the uh, um, investment in climate change and climate finance, and how far the promises we have given as a continent uh, haven't been yet met to, to pledge financial support for climate uh, finance um, in Africa. Mm -hmm. So all these messages, I think we came out uh, from our forum. And of course, one of the key messages also that Uganda itself is now trying to uh, open up collaboration with countries from the global south, like mm -hmm. India, Malaysia, Indonesia, from Saudi Fund for Development. Mm -hmm. And all of this also can be run under um, an umbrella of big development banks, like the Islamic Development Bank, African Development Bank. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you sort of mentioned it, Sarah, but we'll get into it now, was the keynote address that was given by His oh, Excellency okay. Yuri Kaguta Museveni. We'll start with you, Emily, um, the highlights from it that you took, but also we'll come to you, Dr. Palani. Yeah. So over to you, Emily. Uh, thank you very much, Rita. Uh, so we were most graciously graced by His Excellency the President, uh, and he was able to close the forum, but also give a keynote address on what he wants to see Africa yeah. look like in the future yeah. and moving forward. Uh, one, of the key, one of the key messages he left with us was that uh, we need to ensure that there is more trade between member states mm. in the global south. He also highlighted the need for us to sustainably use our natural resources. Um, he talked about uh, things of climate change, ensuring that uh, forests are kept or that uh, Forests once cut are reforestrated. Re yeah. uh, he also highlighted the need to improve research, mm -hmm. uh, research to inform development and also industrialization. Uh, the president also highlighted the need for for good trade relations. He indicated he gave a scenario whereby somebody, another country, has a product mm -hmm. and they are, share, they, are, they are trading with another country, but the trading terms are not fair. So he, he, he emphasized mm -hmm. that there was need for good trade relations between member countries. Mm -hmm. He also highlighted the need for us to intensify trade with the north, with the countries of the north, mm -hmm. that we should be able to have products that we can actually sell to the north. So that, he said, would help us improve and also develop as a region. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, uh, he referred to uh, this, the, the southern region having over 1.3 1 billion people yeah. poor. And most of them, over over sixty percent, are in sub-Saharan Africa, which is which is just sad. Mm. And we need to move from that. Uh, the president also highlighted the need to ensure that countries that we are able to trade within the global south, but mm. also with the north. Yes. Okay. I think those are the key highlights. Okay. Mm. Dr. Palani. Yeah. Uh, the Excellency President also highlighted a number of things he spoke, I mean, from his bottom of heart. Yeah. And he highlighted how actually the South-South cooperation started like 78 yeah. years back with the Pantum Conference in Indonesia, how country like India, Indonesia, worked with African countries to, to lead this process. So he gave a, a kind of very, very excellent the history of this Southern cooperation. Yeah. And that's the one thing I want to highlight. The other thing I also want to highlight, actually, that during that I mean high-level forum, the the honourable Minister of Finance, Planning, the Economic Development, Mr. State, uh, honourable I mean Amos Globi, I mean um, we had I mean option to chat, and the, the government of Uganda really wanted actually strengthen the southern south-south collaboration with some of the Asian country. The fact that I am from India, I have worked a number of years in Asia. And he asked me whether I could actually facilitate the the, the southern south south collaboration between Uganda with countries like India, mm. Indonesia, and Malaysia and other things. So I agreed to I mean I agreed. I would also uh, agree to speak with the other I mean UNDP offices in Asia to try to facilitate. I mean in the in the coming weeks, coming months, trying to get I mean relevant participants from India, or Malaysia, Indonesia to come and share. Like let me give you a few examples. Like, like Malaysia is, is the world leader production of palm oil. Mm. They are actually like Indonesia, Malaysia producing 80, 90 percent of the world oil, palm oil. oil. So the country like Uganda, many African countries import from those countries. Mm. So one of the things UNDP is trying to see, 
bring some of the relevant experts to share their experiences, scale up the palm oil production here. Similarly, Indonesia. Indonesia is known actually leveraging some innovative financing, try to innovate, leverage Islamic Development Bank to mobilize. So that's another area where we try to facilitate the, the increased engagement between Uganda and Indonesia. Similarly, India. India is is, is actually known some, some other area. The minister, I mean, is really wanted to have, see, bring some relevant experts from India. So again, I discussed a couple of areas with the minister. I can say highlight two area. One is on the, the digital financing area. India has actually developed some six, seven years back a yeah, yeah, unified payment system, UPI, which is like kind of try to compete with the, the global MasterCard visa system to promote the digital payments. Mm. Like uh, it's a basically peer-to-peer -peer money transaction. It's a peer-to-merchandise transaction. It's an online bank trans transaction in a more cheaper transaction fee. So that's the one area India is now, I mean, uh, promoted this kind of the digital payment system over 30 countries both in southern world, northern world, European Union, and I wanted to see whether that could be if interested, mm. Uganda could actually benefit from India. Yeah. Another area is that India is known actually on the implementing the Panchayat Raj system, where at the Panchayat means Paris, it's a village level. Mm. So last 25, 30 years, India has done remarkably well in, 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 in implementing the Paris development model type in India. So India has established a number of benchmark, mm. and uh, so again, I want they have even minister for Panchayat Raj system. So I w I have discussed the minister. If the government is interested, again we can actually bring some relevant expert from India or government official to come and share how Uganda could effectively implement the Paris Development Model yeah. in the coming months, coming years. I think so. I so that that's the kind of things UNDP is going to facilitate. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a UNDP would play more like a, a triangular cooperation modality. Yeah. So mm -hmm. facilitate to southern country yeah. and uh, identify a, a interesting area and then see which country has that kind of some best practices mm. and facilitate yes. such a such a cooperation All right. and that kind of thing. Thank you. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Now, as we wrap up, we are running out of time quickly. So I'll just ask you, sir, to take us through what ac outcomes were realized, and that will be where we'll close this conversation today. What outcomes were realized over the past three days of the forum? Well, there, there have been some outcomes tangible immediately happening in the forum. So for instance, we signed an MOU with the Rwanda Cooperation Initiative to support this capacity building among countries of the Global South and mainly African countries. Because Rwanda wants to be the hub for South-South cooperation, mm -hmm. especially that they have already an institutional mechanism established for that. And unfortunately, and we truly hope that Uganda also will follow the same uh, um, 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 institutional mechanism to have its own also agency for international cooperation. We have mm -hmm. this only in Morocco, mm -hmm. Tunisia, Egypt, and maybe we have also uh, Guinea now is trying to establish this and Cameroon. Uh, Comoros also tried to establish this uh, um, uh, mechanism mm -hmm. to identify needs, as he perfectly alluded to Dr. Palani, and also to uh, strengthen the collaboration between the country and different partners from the Global South. Mm -hmm. Secondly, also, we definitely need to um, look at further at the, um, um, what worked and what hasn't worked as regards the implementation of sustainable development goals. We have also launched a, pro um, a partnership with the OECD, the Organization of Economic Development um, 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 uh, and cooperation uh, based in it's it's a European Union or actually um, uh, I would say affiliated uh, organ and has uh, partnerships from countries uh, of the donors of global uh, from the globe and they are trying to help us to achieve the policy coherence for sustainable development and I can I'm happy to say that Ghana Uganda Sierra Leone and other country also announced an initiative to benefit from the policy dialogues which we will be implementing to strengthen policy coherence. Okay. Um, there are many other outcomes. As I said, the continuity, the continuity of this exhibition will be definitely now a standalone mm. activity on, on the margins of the forum. We were very honored that the president passed by these young uh, youth and females mm. to see what they are offering uh, as products and what they are trying to do for the continent. As I said uh, before, definitely the new narrative we are trying to establish in the continent to have a unified voice for um, the Africa we want for Agenda 2063 and the necessity to have our own also vision how we are engaging with the partners 
for the, the benefit of our continent. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you to all our guests this morning now into the afternoon. We've been having a conversation, taking a look at the South to South Triangular Corporation in regard to the second high level forum on South South Triangular Corporation. Now, for any more information about the events over the past three days of the forum, the hashtags that you can be able to use to search on Twitter in particular is the hashtag NPA, that's in full caps, and then South 2, the figure 2, South again, or hashtag South to South. Thank you to our guests. Thank you, Rita, for yeah. hosting us. It was an honor. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, you. Thank you. So we now return you to normal broadcasting. Have a good afternoon.